two of the hosts from the Nakba podcast. Yeah. We have our longtime friend Houston here joining us, and obviously Lynn. You can tell by her name on the screen. Yeah. Lynn, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Lynn. Woo! <laughs> Hell yeah! And I'm here because I'm proud to be an American, not really. Um, Damn. So, yeah. So, America! so let's get America. this show on the road. Um, so I got a little disclaimer note for y'all since, you know, we're talking about being an American, but you're also thinking about race, gender, identity, sexual identity as well. Um, they're sensitive issues. Um, if we ask questions to you, by all means, you are in control of how much you disclose into this room. Um, that's your power. So if you don't want to share amongst yourself or share with the community you're in, by all means, you can keep that to yourself. But if you have something worth talking about in a conversation, by all means, do so. Um, all individuals who identify with a specific background speak based on their own experiences and not speaking on behalf of the entire ethnic group. So keep that in mind. You're using I, you're not saying we, because some stories may not relate to you. You, you cannot relate to the whole group. Uh, be kind, considerate, and respectful to others. And we're going to look at this concept maybe in an academic perspective, maybe personal, et cetera. So yeah, let's get this show on the road. So the first thing we're going to do um, and you could talk amongst yourself or your friends, and we'll share also an input. Is in general, how would you describe an American? Free. <laughs> how, how, how free are we talking? Cowboy free. Cowboy free. Buffet. Uh, Buffet. I'm driving my truck, boat truck in Dougal County. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anything else we got here? Free. Buffets. Uh, guns. Oh, yeah, yeah. Guns. Huge, huge. Yeah. Crowds. Truck. Uh, let's remember truck nuts. <laughs> Crowds. Anything else? Wow. Loud. Loud. Aggressive. We use them imperial freedom units. <laughs> Don't need to know nothing about no kilometer. Hey. As we noticed, there are a lot of men talking here. What about the females or the women are identifying? What do you got? Sexism. Sexism. Thank you very much here. Damn, that's kind of true. Football. football. American football, not soccer or actual football. <laughs> Bed Bath & Beyond does not exist. <laughs> yeah, it's about it. It doesn't? Yeah. What? No. Whoa. It's, it's gone? Closed. I think it's gone. It's yeah, slowly it's going in. They're all closing. Yeah, yeah, they are, actually. The 99 cent store, gone. Dollar General. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Senator Armstrong. Of course. Okay, so anyone want to start in this panel on what? how would you describe being an American? I think Cruz said he wanted to say something first. <laughs> well, I think the, the reason why I even wanted to, like, broach this topic is because it's so rare that we as Americans get to see how other people see us. Like, it, we get, we are kind of the media powerhouse in the world. Other people see us all the time, but we don't get to see how they see us. We just see us reflected everywhere we go. And so the opportunity to be able to talk with people and understand a little bit more about what we think other people think of us is a rarity and something that I think we should, conversation we should probably have more often. Yeah, one of the other things uh, we get portrayed as is, you know, really tall, blonde, blue eyes, muscular, and as you can see from us, <laughs> we we fit that description. There's not one. Spot on. Not a one this of us this, doesn't fit that this is real, 100% real hair. Literally yes. Ryan yeah, I'm I'm rocking it. <laughs> I mean, half of them, some of them aren't really like American American. But if you're thinking like Western European and European, it's the blonde and blue eye um, yeah. go-to type of person. 
Oh, I wanted to make a point of order. I kind of feel like Edward Elric would be more Persian because his father Xerxes, and that's a whole Persia thing, but whatever. Yeah. I, I was just going to, like, nitpick, like, none other. Sorry, I won't do that. I'll, I'll shut up over here. But I think that's one of those things about being American, right? Like, that is true. For whatever you feel about him, there was that speech Ronald Reagan said where he mentions that uh, if you're from another country, it's kind of hard to become a part of that country. But anybody can be an American. It's an attitude. And I think if you're talking about Edward, that boy has the attitude of an American for sure. True. Yeah. Valid. 100%. He just hasn't found his way home. I think that's it. <laughs> He's trapped in spooky Germany that's a way <laughs> too similar to another Germany. <laughs> a certain Austrian painter's favorite Germany. <laughs> I don't identify with him. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent Bandit Keith. Like that's yeah. my boy. Like, come on. Pull a gun on a kid in the car. Yeah, I, you do. That's how you win. <laughs> in America. <laughs> At this point, I think I saw more Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged than actual Yu-Gi-Oh! Actually, oh, yeah, I don't sure. think I ever watched 100%. the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! series. <laughs> I think I stopped after Duel City. Duels. I didn't even remember the arc's name. Okay, so let me go back. So yeah. So this is how you would viewpoint in technicality. But like I said, we always have you know the colored people. Colored being Mexican, right? We have African Americans, right? We have other types of Asians depicted in anime. But first, mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about the Western portrayal that we often see here. I think the most recent one that I've seen is Star and Stripe from My Hero Academia that yeah. popped up in my uh -huh. head. I did not put her on here because I made this two years ago before they made the animation. <laughs> and so ideally, I would have put, if I have updated this, I would have put her on there, but I didn't. But ideally, that's the first person that comes top in top of my head is Star and Stripe here. Um, and I could I could make more commentaries. Do you want me on My Hero Academia of what I, mean, I observed? Even bringing up My Hero Academia, you have that you have one of the main characters in it. He's not American, but he's pretty American. Yeah. I mean, his All outfit is are, yeah. red, white, and blue, Named and after states, yeah, yeah. Detroit Smash. Yeah. yeah, I think like for me. The interesting part about having All Might, because he was quote unquote a foreign exchange student coming into America and learning about pro heroism there, yeah. is the fact that he like embraced this culture, that he put it back onto Japan, and that's his iconic, iconic role is looking like he's a patriotic badass, right? Um, and showcasing, showcasing that in Japan, but still have like the Japanese characteristics and morals. But at the same time, when I think of Star and Stripe, yes, she's a woman. Yes, she's the pro hero, the number one. But it's interesting to see how her origin story of becoming the pro hero was through All Might, who was not an actual American. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's a weird feedback loop, but I actually do appreciate that. Yeah. And so, so her origin story of seeing All Might being a hero and she inspires to be him, it's interesting that she's a female who's taking on this role of a man that's not American, but he's also a man. Um, her origin story stems from that as opposed to having another female who could have been the, is it the seventh? I don't know. Yeah, the seventh, yeah. the seventh wielder could have been that icon for her um, to have that. So it's interesting to see that, yes, she's like a go-to pro-feminism, patriotic woman. At the same time, she has that background story that irks me a little bit, but it's interesting to know. But, uh, okay, so next question. Can we move on? Yeah. 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 Well, I just got to say one other thing. Go ahead. Um, I think it's interesting, this is just, I mean, there might be some anime that depict this that I just haven't seen, but it's interesting, a lot of the stereotypes of Americans as seen by Japan, it's very rare you see, except for Bandit Keith. Bandit Keith is kind of close to it, what I would call the Appalachian, Scots-Irish, redneck aesthetic, basically speaking. Yeah. I mean, and that is, that's my ethnic uh, uh, background, basically. <laughs> that's where I'm, I come from in our hills and some Okies and all that stuff. That Dust Bowl really wrecked my family. Um, 
It turned out we're in California now, so it kind of panned out. So don't worry about us. We're fine now. But <laughs> hopefully it doesn't happen again. Knock on wood. Um, but yeah, like generally speaking, they don't recognize like because when you look at like European media when they represent America, I have found a plethora of terrible Southern accents done very poorly. And that seems to be what the United States is, is a handful of states that, like, they're like, you know, there's, there were the northern states, and they have a different accent, and then there's out west. I mean, sometimes you get the cowboys. You do get the cowboys, and sometimes that's in, like, in Cowboy Bebop, they had that. Yeah. The, the, she might have just been, you know, wearing an outfit to, you know, please the crowd. But it's just one thing I've noticed is that when it comes to the depiction of at least white America, there is not that, like... Dumb hillbilly stereotypes. I kind of appreciate that. Thank you, Japan. Thank you. <laughs> I know how to read. So the next question I have, actually. In anime, you can also apply this to manga as well. And if you have other sort of other media you want to bring in, but amongst yourself or even talking out loud, I will take this moment. How do you think, I would say, Japanese character? define an American. And we elaborate this a little bit more. But this does not just mean the one we went to so far. A, a lot of ex-military became bikers. I mean, that wasn't uncommon. Was, Grandpa! That was an excellent point. I didn't pick up on that myself. Half those guys do look military. Actually, some of them are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely tall and muscular. We definitely have muscles. I wonder if it's, <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it's like an action movie influence, you know? Well, I was going to say about the military thing, it's interesting that it's always represented quite heroically, which is weird given the fact that, like, you know, Japan and America were not on the same side in World War II. In case you didn't know that, in case you weren't aware, take note. Um, and I, it's not a Japanese example, but I'm thinking, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a Chinese propaganda film, basically, about their role in the Korean War. But even in that movie, they represented the American soldiers as, like, genuine badasses. It was kind of, a, like, even though, like, clearly this is meant to be propaganda domestically consumed, it was watchable. I was like, I'm bored, I'll watch it, I'll give it a <laughs> shot. Um, it was a good movie, I liked it. I was like, oh, I'm entertained, this is great. I see what you're doing here, but like the even um, MacArthur is represented as this like very heroic big figure, and even in that media created in China, they depicted all the Americans as bigger than the Asian characters. Yeah, I was yeah. going to bring that up. Either were portrayed as a really loud Elvis impress Elvis like you impersonation, yeah. or we swear and we love ketchup apparently on everything. <laughs> Damn, they got us. <laughs> Oh, you bring up a good point yeah. about that. Oh, uh, if only, if only. Yeah, I mean, we're all I wish here, right? Accurate. I mean, even if, like, I'm going to use Tamaki Senpai, because I love Tamaki Senpai. It's the only one I acknowledge besides Edward Elwick and from Full Metal. He's a half -a. So he's part Japanese, and then he's part, like, French. So he has that European aura to them. When you're a half -a, right, um... You end up, like, controversy with Tamaki, like, his, his family doesn't identify with him due to his Western origins, right, even though he's Japanese. But at the same time, there's a struggle with his identity, but he still has that wealthiness that comes to him. Like, he still is made of money. So even if, in his background, his ethnicity is not um, partaken or anything, they don't consider his ethnicity. He still has money that gives him that elitism. So that's a pretty good point being brought up about that. Yeah, as far as like, even when you think about like broke American type characters, outside of like a bounty hunter character where you can only infer that they need money because they're a bounty hunter, I actually can't think of any where that's like a, a point of the plot is they're usually balling. Yeah, you, you got yeah. cash. You, you're, you're doing good. I think that that's Live the dream, like, by the way. The difference in work culture, where like we actually have time off, take vacations. We're not, generally speaking, working ourselves as hard. Then yeah, maybe that drives that sort of distinction in perception. So many beautiful artwork of anime girl eating burger. It's like cherished, cherish every single one. And just the prevalence of McDonald's knockoff as like like that was a part of the plot of Devil uh, Devil's Part Timer was that he worked at the Mig Ronalds. I love that. I've never forgotten the name of that knockoff. 
Okay. American cultural victory. Oh. So keeping those two questions in mind about how you how we view Americans, because we only saw one side of the picture here, and also how Japanese creators see Americans, there is another part to it. And it's these individuals right here, um, a people of color depicted in anime here. And so when you see them, both sides, they're still controversial, right? Because there's still some degree, some stereotypes being brought up. Um, about these individual characters. Um, so going back and thinking, you got, you got this side. We were downright no. The hillbilly, the people that in the middle of America, because I only see California, maybe, maybe New York City, uh, maybe the West, maybe the South, just a little bit of the I, South, maybe. I, I've, I've been to Arkansas. Yeah. I, can, I, can, I can attest. Now we're going to look Dang. at technically how do you see America if you identify with some of these ethnicities? Because I heard, I heard a lot of people, and I'm just observing of how people are dialogue. Some people that are talking at the moment are, have light skin, and they're very outspoken, right? But what about the individuals in this room who aren't white or have a Western ethnicity background? Well, it, it's an interesting sociological point, but um, there's only one area of the country with people that actually just identify themselves as like, I am ethnically American. And it's, it's the people in Appalachia, basically. Though It's the people that are somewhat represented on the, the former cartoon Squidbillies. That's, that's, that, that's, that's where you find, no, it's, you could look at a chart, the largest number of people who say, I identify as an American ethnically, that's them. Um, usually of like Scots-Irish extraction arrived uh, early 1700s. The English dumped us all here, said, your job is to protect the, the, the real white people from the non-ones, and uh, we'll let you get into the club eventually. Like, oh, thank you, that's so nice. Can we have Scotland back? Like, no? Damn. Hey, you want to elaborate? My fellow representation. Uh, are... <laughs> Not to mean to put you on the spot, but come on. You're on the spot, by the way. Yeah. Just so you know, you're you're literally on the spot. I mean, the thing is, there is one character on this sheet that I actually relate to as far as their character and how they represent themselves. And it's it's actually not even the Hispanic one. It's Revy Lee. Revy is American through and through. Technically, half Chinese. But, I mean, that is 100% an American. Every stereotype that you can throw in. She's aggressive. She loves her guns. Uh, doesn't take shit from anyone. You know? Like, you're talking about somebody who will... Stand, stare somebody way bigger down in their face, smoke a cigarette, and handle a problem. That's an American. That is an American right there. I am uh, speechless right now. <laughs> why, are you, why are you speechless? I don't know. What? Nothing comes to mind? No, I just see Chad. <laughs> and just the name Chad just screams America. Oh, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They changed that name, Chad, into something negative. <laughs> you're, you're just lost thinking of that scene I described from Azamanga Dayo. That's where you're at. You're at that, just on loop forever. Actually, there is on that exact point. So there's a thing that I'm sure a lot of people in this room have heard before um, that I've heard my entire life, which is, you know, the, people ask you what you are. You say American. They say, yeah, but, but where from? Like, where's your family from, really? My family is actually from California, like from before it was the United States. We've been here that long. The arguments that I've had to be like, we're from California. No, 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 but like, where's your family from? California. <laughs> but where's your family from? California. There are no records before California. There are records hundreds of years ago. It wasn't America yet. California still. So like, I'm sure that's something that a lot of people can relate to. And I'm I'm pretty sure if you saw any of these guys in their regular daily life, they'd probably have to deal with that a couple of times, too. I mean, Chad did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Chad, did. Chad definitely did. <laughs> there is uh, some, for Native Americans, there was that whole uh, Crunchyroll original. Aqua. There we go. That Honest one was supposed Equinox to be about the... Mesoamerican. There we go. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you want to know the closest that's on here... Is Shaman, Shaman King, that character yeah. on the bottom 
Bottom, let me, let bottom me, left. Bottom yeah. Left. He, so this is the, the newest um, series of Shaman King, but the 2000s for, for kids Fox version of this particular character that I have no remember their name is because I didn't really watch Shaman King, but I had to do my research for this. They did not like the depiction of his Native Americanism because um, it was pretty much like the Thanksgiving type of um, Native American. They, they brush up on a bit on this character for the new one, but that particularly one irked people. Um, but if you're looking at it holistically, besides the Onyx Equinox Crunchyroll version, based on what I remember, there is no Native American representation. Yeah, yeah. in anime, Native American is not really in them, but in fighting games, Hella. yeah, we're in yeah. there. Uh, and they look exactly how you would expect, and some people might view that as a problem. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I would say the they're Native Americans in spirit where, you know, they're trying to reclaim their land and that's what, you know, a lot of stuff happened here in America where someone else, bigger, wider, came in, took the land. I was like, all right, this is ours now. And the uh, Viper, I think it was the name, was trying to lead the resistance to grab it back from them. But yeah, Native Americans don't really pop up too much in anime, but we are in fighting games. Ah. Yeah. Unfortunately, when it comes to depictions of Native Americans, they kind of get short shrift in that regard. Yeah, that's... They are the Kansas City Chiefs logo. They yeah, are, it, it's know. unfortunate, and that's, like, general in all media. They don't really yeah. get, like, a whole... I mean, in fact, I struggle to think of anything Japanese or anywhere that represents Native Americans outside of, like, very narrow contexts. Like, it's either a recreation of Dances with Wolves retold in a different, you know, slightly different format, or, yeah, they don't, they don't get much. And to some extent, other cultures, when they think of what are these Americans like, they're basically copying our, our yeah, Hollywood productions. So it's sort of a second-hand um, set of stereotypes retranslated and probably completely void of their context anyway. It's like, sadly, it's a disease. I would call it a disease um, that we put ourselves into a situation, but sadly, it's not I put, we put ourselves in this situation. It's the people of, like, the World War One and the World War Two propaganda of, like, your Disney characters, like Mickey Mouse portrayal. Um, Don't and watch old Disney cartoons. And then also, like, Looney Tunes as well, that they have their war veteran propaganda, like, full war, which is why you have this militant ideology of what Americans should be. And then when you put Marvel Cinematic, right, and you're thinking about all of Hollywood, you sadly have this disease that we're going to export what we previously made money off of for propaganda, and we're just refuting this um, this character, the stereotype, sadly. And I think one of the questions I have for you all is how many of you actually went to Japan, like legit Japan? Okay, so keep those people in mind. I'm going to use you all here. Okay. How many of you were able to talk to someone and ask where you're from, and you said, oh, from like America, Pacific, maybe California, or some other place? What about you, Lynn? You went to Japan. Yeah, I did. How did it go for you? So I had a similar situation like him where I went with a, a group of other students, and this was in high school, and a bunch of high school girls saw us with that same reaction and decided to do like a little social media pic with them. <laughs> um, but in my perspective of how I had to experience Japan, it was a mixture of like everyone here that has like this foreign, um, you're American, etc., and then they wanted to interact with you, but then still talk about like what patriotism is, freedom, etc. But there was this underlying feeling that I had when going to Japan, where it's like you're American, but like you're not really American um, type of feeling because you're Asian. And so I'm Filipino. It's the same thing when I went to the Philippines. It's like, you're Filipino, but you're not Filipino. Um, and the same thing with the Japan. You're American, but at the same time, you're still 
Asian, and that's Dang, sad. you just can't win. Yeah. Um, so I know, so my experience in Japan, like, yes, I love anime, I love, like, Japanese literature, I learned the language, etc. There's still this underlying feeling of, like, not being what you're supposed to be or identifying with that. You weren't um, American enough yet? No, I'm not American enough. <laughs> um, so well, if yeah. we go by the Scots-Irish rules, you might have to wait like 150 years. It seems to be like the lagging, the lag time on that. I don't know. Yeah, the same thing that happened to my sister when she went to Indonesia. Um, they thought, my, when my sister went to Indonesia um, for like a an academic business trip, they thought she was Indonesian. And so what ends up happening, though, is like in Indonesia, you have to, females have to cover their face. Um, she got yelled at by various local individuals saying, why aren't you covering your face? But my sister would constantly have to say, I'm American, I'm not from here, um, and I'm not Indonesian. Same situation of like, you look Indonesian, you claim you're American, but you're not American because the blonde hair, blue eyed person that's also a teacher is American from like North Dakota or South Dakota here. Um, and so there is this offness of being Asian, going into a different Asian country and still trying to identify as being American as well, which is something the person of that can empathize, but if you're also Asian, trying to figure that out as well, of being in, in a, another Asian country. You'll know if you've never been to a foreign country and you have that experience being Asian, you'll, you'll have that feeling of offness um, that's being described. But, uh, have you felt yeah. going? Yeah. Um Obviously, as you can tell, I'm American, but I've gone to Mexico, and it's the same thing. We're just like, oh, you're not really a Mexican. Or I've also heard the same about if you go to Spain. They're like, oh, how's it doing back in your uh, little pueblos? And a lot of Spaniards like to think that we're still living off the land, like how you know Native Americans are. And it's just like a lot of Mexicans forget, like that's where we came from first before the Spaniards came in decided to lighten things up for us <laughs> but um yeah going just that i think that's one of the things about being american is like houston brought up uh even if you're not born or if you're from here it doesn't matter what you look like you're still an american yeah yeah that's a, a philosophy that i personally subscribe to I, I genuinely think that all that it really takes for you to be american is just to you sort of put yourself in you know I think it's a self-selecting thing. I don't think it's like other people can make uh, an assumption about you, but you know, as long as it's like believing in Santa Claus, as long as you feel it in your heart. <laughs> uh, Santa lives in Lapland. Okay, he is real, one hundred percent. I will not have any Santa deniers here. Okay, I will not. My next question for you all. On a scale of one to five, being five for sure, you feel American to one, like you don't, you're me, don't, doesn't feel like you're American, American. So you're going from for sure five Amer to, a to a one, which is me. How many you feel like you're a five American, American? Dude, me, 100%. 100%. You know why? Fourth of July is my birthday. Yeah. I have to be American. Girl! Hard to avoid it there, yeah. Proud yeah. to be an American. Okay. And how many of you are like me that you're that that one that doesn't feel it? Are we are we are we are we in the same community? Oh yeah. I mean it's a double thing. Because I'm loud like American and I sound incredibly American. So they see me and then they hear me. And they look again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a weird four. I would say I'm a solid four, almost five, 4.5 somewhere. Because it's like, obviously, I know, like, through gene genealogy and the family lore and stories that have been told, you know, passed down, pretty much everybody has lived on this continent since the late 1600s. And, you know, we also know, like, what clan in the Highlands of Scotland we all come from and, you know, what they were doing and how many sheep they stole that year and why the English kicked us out because we tried to kill them one time. Picky. 
Yeah, just one. Well, it was a lot of times actually. I, I, I'm overselling it. It was a lot of rebellions. They had they. It's always the English's fault. Yeah, you gotta really not trust those guys. Not gonna lie. In case you didn't know, don't don't. They want you to sign something. That's a bad call. I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> like uh, any treaty, any deal, anything. Just it's gonna go south quick. Yeah, and, and in fact, my family uh, still says, uh, nobody with the last name Campbell am I allowed to date. Like, that was told to me. <laughs> that was communicated. And this is something that I'm told happened in the 1600s, and I'm like, so that's why we don't have Campbell's ch chicken noodle soup. Got it. <laughs> Good to know we're holding that grudge a long time. We're not getting rid of that one. Got it. You're about to say your last name's Campbell. It's like, okay, let's, let's go. <laughs> He didn't like us. I know that for a fact. Uh, well, okay, back to the 4.5 rating. So when I think back, I'm like, well, there's nowhere else I'm from. I'm basically from here. I mean, you know, it's been hundreds of years, with the exception of my one great grandma who's got some weird Eastern European unexplained origin. Um, thanks to a DNA test, we confirmed it's something called Romani. We're like, okay, interesting. Other than that, um, pretty much USA as far back as when the English dumped us off a boat here um, and said, hey, you're going to go fight the Native Americans for us, right? Like, sure, I guess that's what we're here for now. Um, but then there's a part of me where there's like, there's a lot of things going on in the country where I'm like, even though my family line helped fought in the War of Independence, fought on both sides of the Civil War, which is very weird when you go to those sides, when you go to like, so I mentioned I've been to Arkansas, and it's very weird. There's a display that has both sides' army uniforms and medals on either side of the wall from whichever side somebody got conscripted into. And I'm like, that's, it's kind of wholesome that you guys get along, actually, that you have both in the same house with, like, little, that's Grandpa. He fought, he fought for the Union in that side, and he shot at this Grandpa who was in the Confederate Army. <laughs> and then their kids got married. I'm like, well, that's, you know, at least I guess they healed, you know, they got over it. Um, good for them. So, like, there's a lot of history for me here, but at the same time, I'm like, there's a lot of things going on in this country where I'm like, uh, we're not doing as great. Uh, things are kind of looking like they're going south. That's why we, that's why I, ha I only did one in five. Okay, how about the threes that you put on the hat that you're American if your favorite sports teams win? But then when you see the news, right, and you see another American with Ooh. guns, you're like, nah, that ain't, that ain't me today. After, after that Giants-Padres game, I haven't watched sports. So, I don't know, so we fun. have one, two, threes here, four, five, maybe. So you switch hats depending on the day. Gotcha. And then you have the twos who are like, for sure, most of the time I ain't American, but there will be moments, peak moments. And that's what the American. papers say. Gotcha. Okay. That's all, uh, that's all the questions I got. <laughs> I, I was informed, actually, that if you can prove your descendant of the Highland Clearances, you can get your old lands back. But then I saw pictures of it, and I'm like, God, that land sucked. <laughs> uh, I guess it was for the best we got kicked out, man. That was not very good. I guess it all worked out in the end. But, man, I, I saw it. I was like, oh, I, I, yeah, I can live in Scotland again. I'll bring it back. And then I'm like, ugh. There's not a tree inside. That's depressing. Ugh, I'll stick with California. I don't have a Mexico to run back to. It's it's right here. So um, I'm. Hey 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 hey. Mexico's in here. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's in our hearts. It's in our hearts. And they have a cool flag. So you know. Yeah. One of the best. Uh, yeah. They the best flag design. One hundred percent. I'm just saying, stars and stripes. Like it was cool when it was a circle. I liked the circle thing that we had when it was the colonies. That was kind of nice. Maybe make it the Enclave flag from Fallout if we're going to no, do that. That's kind of nice. Actually, if we get a 51st state, they actually have the flag design sign, and it is a giant come, circle. It's a giant Come circle. on, Puerto Rico. Come on board. We want a cooler design. Guam is cool. Guam would be awesome. Because we have some. Oh, yeah, I forgot we have Guam, too. I know somebody from Puerto Rico, so I have to root for them. i gotta, I got to be on Team Puerto Rico. Uh, I know a lot of people from Guam. Right? Ah. Next thing you know, you're going to reveal that last name's Campbell. We're going to have to fight, aren't we? Like, it's going to happen. No, I'm like five Okay, Hugh, you're safe. Yeah, I thought the only American was Joseph. No, there's Joe hella Star. Americans. But now I'm trying to remember, and I actually don't... I don't think he is. I don't remember. I'm trying to think about That would be time. something that we'd have to Google. Was he maybe Indian? 
No. I always I thought of him as, I, I thought of it. He was I supposed to be like Indian American. I remember where this picture American. came from as I was thinking about this because I stole it from another slideshow I did in two years ago because I told you I did this two years ago with yeah. Starshite. This particular picture, they're not quote unquote all Americans. What I did, what the purpose for this is to show um, ethnicities or different color of ethnicities. Oh, okay. For a different panel I did for Fanime in 2021 for that Zoom one, because I was talking about Asian people back then. Um, that's could, why. I think yeah. you could argue yeah. that in spirit, almost all of these are American though. Yeah. Cause so like, when, Look, look, I was uh, thinking America is in here. It's in here. It's in our hearts. The reveal yeah. of production. The reveal of production behind this slide is because I needed, I wanted this slide, but then I also wanted to have sort of like, okay, you have these perceptions of Americans, quote unquote, Westerners, but then you also have perception of colored people, characters. I uh, That was from that that particular Zoom one. If you were there in Fanime 2021, virtually Zoom. I would present it there. I think, if I had to guess, it's because we stopped doing it for a little bit. If you think about like 80s movies and stuff, like action movies, there was almost always like well, there was still some Arnold in the 90s. Schwarzenegger playing an American for some reason, and then and then everybody else in the cast was black, Hispanic, Asian, whatever. Wait, wasn't Blade in the 90s? Blade was in the 90s. Yes, okay, but, sorry, I'm thinking think of the favorite decade. Yeah, I think that's more of an exception than the rule. I think for a little bit there, we got really caught up with you know, uh, oh, the sort of like middle American. Oh yeah, Spawn. Like it portrayal, and I think we stopped doing it. The history, if you think of the histories, right, of the 1960s, right, and that climate 1970s, but then you also have in the 1990s to the 2000s the Gulf War, and then 9/11. That was a sensitive topic, and so you wanted to think about how you're perceiving America within those times. But then now you're coming back to like more representation, and that's due to, you would say, arguably like the younger generations <laughs> about like LGBT issues. You also talk about that Me Too movement, etc. So how we perceive media, and this isn't in Japan, but how we perceive it is based on the trends of history and what people are interested in. Yeah. 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 Something. I mean, it, some of it is just hard to read. It's just like the rise of fads. You know, one year isekai is everything, and then the next year we ha finally have the return of the musical group. Yay, Bochi the Rock. Anyway, um, bringing yeah. back the Kaon spirit. But with, even with those trends, like outside of that, if you're thinking about history rise and your political stance, etc., and thinking about what's going on in the world and what media you're putting out there, you're going to think about, like, you don't want Americans to be betrayed in a certain lens, even if such and such war is happening. Similar to how Russia is being looked at, if you looked at also the Middle East, etc. like, when 9-11 hit, maybe you weren't born at the time, or maybe you're, like, a little kid. That's a pretty sensitive topic to talk about, mm -hmm. especially what ethnicity you are in. And then if you're thinking about those stuff, how you're portrayed in, portraying those individuals in the media, it can spark controversy. And so you, when you think about that and thinking about the trends and stuff, like what's, the, what's you're going to have people talking about but also not cause a stir yeah. um, conversation. So, yeah. That's why in, like, I think nowadays when you see more representation, you see more manga having or more webtoons coming out with representation you get that sense they're in the trend because this is something to talk about but they're also shifting perspectives and so when you see both of these like all both sides have controversies like they're the stereotypes in both ends of the floor but like thinking about this now it's really dependent on the person consuming this how they're gonna perceive these characters are they gonna follow like the stereotype Friends, or there's more to those characters and how they see them, or looking that looking at these characters at a different lens beyond the stereotype. So it's really up to you as an individual how you would perceive them, because we always have controversies about how we read characters, and so similar in this situation is really how you read them. I mean, on that same thing, again, I I do think there is also probably just that aspect of like you tend to write what you see. Oh, yeah. And so I think you just, 
I think that's one of the reasons too why people are encouraged to look into other cultures is because that gets you a, a deeper understanding of things, but it also just gets you out of your bubble. There are a lot of people who are writing. Uh, I mean, Japan itself is a pretty exclusionary country. Um, they get our media, but they, by and large, are kind of their own separate place. They're not as uh, open, and so they get what we show them. And if we're not showing them all of us, then they don't see all of us. And if they don't see all of us, they don't remember that we even exist, and then we don't show up in things. I think this is another side story that you have from your point. I have a, I didn't realize until a teacher pointed out to me when I was reading books was how many times do you, if a character has not explicitly stated their ethnicity, how many times have you instantly made them blonde and blue-eyed or made them white? And in my head, I was like, oh my god, I did that so many times on a character. No, I made them, I like, mean, if we're thinking about it. Slightly yeah. similar, but I, maybe I was, slightly sm I was slightly smarter as a small child, but I remember really, really little watching in the 90s, the dub of Sailor Moon. And, you know, Molly Baker and even little kid me's like, I don't think there's a lot of people in Japan named Molly Baker that talk with that accent. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah. sure that's not a thing. Yeah, it's like, like, if you think about it, like when I read American or British novels or stuff that has like that name, they instantly, I instantly transformed it into yeah. a white European Granted, and, I used yeah. to think Romania was yeah. like where Portland, Oregon is, but that was little kid me, okay? Yeah. When I was even seven. If even if it's like Russian literature, it instantly goes back to that stereotype habit. And then it isn't until either the author is a colored person where I'm like, if they're Korean, I'm going to instantly put them into my favorite Korean actor or actress, right? Or mm -hmm. K-pop star, unless... Are they Japanese or they're Filipino? I instantly switch them to whether, whether it's me as a character. But we tend to, like, I didn't realize this until it was mentioned that we tend to have a tendency, unless they say their ethnicity, we tend to put them into whatever we already consume as our knowledge. I'm just yeah. saying, every time I've read The Count of Monte Cristo, he's me. He's literally me every that's time. You, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> literally me. Well, yeah, I mean, we are a. Uh, I mean, getting like less romantic about it, we are a continent-spanning empire that probably has every spoken language known to man being spoken at least by one person here. I mean, that's, that's, that's different. You know, the Romans had that too, but, you know, well, not every language, but yeah. every one they knew about. More to your point? Honestly, the only time that I can think of it is when they kind of focused on American heroes in uh, My Hero Academia, but other than that... Yeah, because otherwise, maybe it just doesn't happen, because for them, that for Japan, that is such an alien... Because, like, you know, if you're not from here, you're not going to really know what is yeah. going on here beyond movies, and even then, you can't really imagine it. But going back to when you guys are talking about when you're reading books, I go strictly off the characteristic... Or not characteristic, how they're described... Because a lot of the time, um, I read uh, The Court of Thorns and Roses. Yeah. Greece was just the guy from Ratatouille, the bad guy, the <laughs> whole time. Anytime anyone is a lanky, pasty person, that's just who I picture. But I think that's just because I watch a lot of cartoon movies. Because <laughs> I just recently put, uh, from Stormlight Archives, Navani as the mom from Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> that is Navani. And I was just like, damn, I watch way too much cartoons. You're, you're at an anime convention, you're fine. You do, you do not watch too much cartoons. Yeah. You're in a room with people who watch a lot of cartoons. I'm dressed as a Toho character, do not you know, go there. That in Japan has a lot of Western-themed restaurants, I've learned. I've, I've looked that up, like western theme And Western-themed, like, get-ups. Mm -hmm. So, like, like, we are dressed as Japanese characters right now, many of us. They'll have a similar thing where they're dressing in, like, cowboy hats and everything. And I'm like, hell yeah. Almost out of time. I mean, I guess I could conclude by saying, you know, Japan thinks a lot about us. Uh, they create various representations of us. Maybe it's Bandit Keith. Maybe it's Senator Armstrong. If you're play, if, if if you're a video game person, just try to live, go out there and live up to the to the image. You know, try to be the American that Japan expects of us. Okay, go out there and be that person. You can right now. It's inside of all of you. I believe in you. You believe in me? Yes. When I don't even believe in myself at the that, moment? Don't believe in yourself. Believe in the me who believes in you, okay? I ain't gonna believe in me anyways. Go ahead. <laughs>
Good yes. <laughs> That's the inspiration that I'll get you through the day. You know, whenever you're feeling down on yourself, you're like, you know what? I can do more push-ups. Yes, I can do everything. I've got to live up to the expectations. Oh, yeah. Hey, Thanks. yeah. Yeah, they, they forget Canada's there, as we all do. <laughs> That's a dangerous, dangerous world we're going into is only English speaking. Um, True. Mm -hmm. That's another topic to talk about later on, but like a ma the majority or the dominant language is English that you have to know, um, and we're slowly shifting towards that. It's a scary thing to think about with the amount of, ex I'm going to say, extinct languages out there, unless you study them. Yeah, the um, branch yeah. of my family that lives in Canada, some of them still speak Canadian Gaelic, but, you know, it's fading out quick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, same with Mexico. When I went there in Oaxaca, all of that mm -hmm. yeah. was in English, and I was surprised that they were even speaking English, and it's like, dude, we're in the middle of Mexico. Yeah, it's always kind of scary how easily convenience will kill culture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Canada. Yeah. That's a better burn than I could come up with. <laughs> Can we get an F in the chat for our Canadian friends? <laughs> F in the chat, you know, really just boop. Okay. So, you want to close up?